Okay, so for this next segment, we are going to create a conductivity meter. This will allow you to tell whether or not a solution will conduct electricity, and it's pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to build that. Um, but first, we're going to talk about why we'd want to do this anyway. So I'm going to ask you a question at home, um, and I'm going to give you a second to answer it, and I'm going to predict what I think you're going to say. So my question is, why should you not go swimming during a lightning storm? And I have written down here already what I think you're going to say. So take a second. Okay, got your answer? Did you say this? That's not right. So water does not conduct electricity. Turns out there's not really not anything about water that would make it conduct electricity. So as you know, water is H2O and I have drawn one here, kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse, where this circle down here is an oxygen atom, right? Because it's H2O, O is the oxygen. And the two little circles on the top, those are your two hydrogen atoms. So that's the shape that water takes um, as a molecule a little Mickey Mouse shape. So it turns out, um, in order for something to conduct electricity, there have to be mobile charges. Now, we know that some things um, in nature are neutral and some things are charged, whether they're positively charged or negatively charged. A molecule is neutral. So there's nothing about this that can conduct any kind of electricity. Metals conduct electricity really well because they have free floating electrons in them and those are negatively charged. As it turns out, water itself, because it's neutral, is incapable of conducting electricity. So why should you never go swimming during a lightning storm? Well, as it turns out, if you had a sample of pure water like this, um, that actually is pretty rare in nature. The only way that you could have this going on is if you had some really distilled or deionized water. Um, and bodies of water and tap water are not pure. Um, they can have a number of things in them. So tap water, for example, has chloride ions floating in it, chlorine. Chlorine is added to kill bacteria. So that's what that, that little guy might look like. Um, you could also have fluorine in there. Fluoride is added because it's good for our teeth. If you have copper pipes in your home, you might have some copper ions getting picked up um, in there. So you can have some, some copper ions floating around in there. So it's not just pure water. And in bodies of water, um, there's all kinds of ions in there too, particularly in the ocean because there's so many dissolved salts making it salt water. So when lightning or any source of electricity hits water, what it does is it bounces around between these ions. Kind of think of it as like a pinball machine, if you've ever played pinball. And if you haven't taken your kids to play pinball machine, do that as soon as we're able to go back out into public. Um, but if you set the, the pin back and you let the ball go, the ball dings around between all the things in the pinball machine. Think of the ball as like the electricity and all the things that it's dinging off of would be your ions. If there wasn't anything in the machine, the ball would just sweep out and come right back. It wouldn't be conducted between anything. So I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to create a meter where you could test this. So what you're gonna need is some copper wire, tape, a few popsicle sticks, um, a retired Christmas light, which I have used a um, wire stripper thing to pull the, um, the covering off so that it exposes the bits of copper on the ends. Um, and a nine volt battery and some scissors. And so what I'm gonna do, and um, this would be really cool for you to build at home with your, with your kids. Um, I'm gonna start by just taping the two popsicle sticks together. And I also have some salt on hand because I'm gonna show you the difference between deionized water and, uh, and something that's not deionized. So if I add salt, that's gonna add a lot of sodium and chlorine ions that are gonna conduct electricity for us. So I tape my popsicle sticks together. Now I'm gonna tape my nine volt battery to the popsicle sticks. And I'm gonna try to do this really quickly to get to the point here. You could make yours look as nice as you want. So this one's gonna be a little bit rough looking, but you get the point. All right, so I've taped my nine volt battery here. Now I'm gonna take my Christmas light and I'm gonna take one end of the wire and I'm gonna sort of jam it into the, it doesn't matter which side, but I'm gonna jam mine into the bigger end of the nine volt battery. I'm kind of gonna wad up the, the copper here and I'm gonna stick it in there. And this actually would work a lot better with electrical tape, but I couldn't find it in my lab here and I'm trying to hurry. 
So I'm going to tape that into there just so it's held in place. And then from the other um, probe area of the nine volt battery, I'm going to take a piece of copper wire. You could actually pull this from the Christmas um, strand as well, since you're sacrificing it for the, the greater good here. You could also get that from there. So I'm going to loop that around there and tape that in. Again, electrical tape works much better for this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my other piece of copper wire and I'm gonna kind of just loop the other end of the, you could actually just use the exposed wire from the Christmas light for this part, but just so that it has two distinct prongs for you to stick in the um, solution. And you can test if they're gonna work by touching them together. So this is functional, yay. All right, so I'm gonna dip this into plain old water and nothing happens. And this actually, this isn't plain old water, this is deionized, so there's nothing in here that would conduct electricity. So now into that same cup of water, I'm gonna add some ions. I'm gonna add salt, which will put sodium ions and chloride ions in there that are gonna act as my pinball machine bouncy things for my electricity can, to be conducted off of. I'm gonna give that a quick stir, get those positive and negative ions all free floating in there. And then, there we go, voila, it lights up. So electricity is leaving one end of the battery going into this wire. The electricity is getting kicked around all between all the ions in the salt water. They're returning up the other wire and into the bulb to make it glow. And that's how I know that this solution will conduct electricity, um, AKA it is an electrolyte. We can talk more about that another time. So um, if you do build one of these, maybe share with me how it came out. Um, they're pretty neat and try them in all kinds of other solutions. Some that I recommend, um, Gatorade, Pedialyte, anything that has any kind of dissolved ions and it should give you some kind of a read. And the brighter the bulb, the more ions you have in the solution. Enjoy, guys.